Welcome to Brandon Hall Group's Excellence at Work podcast. You will hear from industry leaders covering innovative, cutting edge business, learning, and HR topics that weave current market research and technology into each episode. Our Excellence at Work podcast is hosted by Brandon Hall Group's Chief Operating Officer and Principal HCM Analyst, Rachel Cook. Hi, and welcome to Brandon Hall Group's Excellence at Work podcast. Thank you for joining us today, and I'd like to warmly welcome Eric Watkins, the president of Abstract Marketing Group. Hi, Eric. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on, Rachel. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking, and I'm looking forward to our chat today. And just to share with our listeners and viewers a little bit about you, Um, Eric started at Abstract Marketing Group in 2012 as an unpaid operations intern. And in just nine years, uh, Eric has gone from an intern to holding a position on the executive team. Today, he oversees the entire company as a president of Abstract Marketing Group. While each role that Eric has held throughout his tenure at Abstract has been vital, his role in the restructuring of the partner sales division was one of the biggest highlights. He enabled Abstract to grow immensely in a sustainable manner in which the employee count increasing by 140%. In 2018, Eric earned Workforce Magazine's Game Changer Award for his contributions to Abstract's culture. And in 2022, he was one of the STL's 100 Titans. As the company grows in revenue, leaders like Eric ensure that its culture also progresses. That's that's impressive, Eric. So, and I we were just chatting a little bit before we got started today, kind of about your journey at Abstract, and you know, it you started there basically right out of school. So, um, can you share a little bit about Abstract and the culture and how you you know what what kind of got you started in the industry and also kept you for so long at this company? Sure. Well, first off, right place, right time, and a lot of luck involved in making it to this point. Uh, but to, to start abstract, just what we do as a company, we're a sales development company. So if you think about it, every service leading up to getting you in front of a qualified sales meeting for your sales team to be able to sell your services or product, that's what we do. Phone calls, emails, LinkedIn, web development, et cetera. So I studied marketing in school. And like most people who studied marketing, I figured I'd be sitting in a room coming up with big ideas. And, uh, the summer before I graduated, I had the opportunity to intern at Abstract, and I remember coming to this place. We had about 30 employees at the time. We were about 2 to $3 million in revenue, and they had this big space that they wanted to grow into. And, you know, I figured, you know, this is an ambitious culture. This is a great place to plant my roots. And I fell in love with the, the startup, fast-paced environment and the fact that the work that I did every day truly had impact. And so I eventually got an offer to start full time. I worked my way through the operations department, ended up transitioning into a space I never thought I would in sales management and account management. And then I was able to just be surrounded by the right team and continue to develop my skills and had leaders that believed in me that kind of helped me every step of the way. And and fast forward today, we have, you know, we're knocking on the door of 600 employees and we're about $60 million Sixty million dollars in revenue now, so it's been a crazy ride to get to this point. Nice, nice, definitely a great ride for you, and uh, and also um, you received your team received an, a gold award for HCM and from our Brandon Hall Group's Excellence Awards for your and this is for your onboarding team. So congratulations! And today we're going to be talking about the importance of employee recognition. And obviously, you've been recognized along the way to help you achieve where you are today. And, you know, we see in our research um, the struggle between kind of that genuine recognition and how do you, you know, how do you, how, how do you, you know, have a platform or have a strategy and process to recognize people where it's um, a balance between, you know, recognizing them for their contributions and um, and and so can you talk through kind of what that looks like and the different types of recognition? Sure. Yeah, I'd like to start with 
I think as a business leader, you can get caught up in the day-to-day very easily. You're looking at profit. You're looking at revenue. You're looking at the processes. You're looking at the clients and their experience. And it can very easily get lost that you have people coming in, working really, really hard every day that are looking to achieve something. And I think at the the root of it, why recognition is so important is, you know, if you think of any individual, what we really want, like what we really crave is to be important, is to be unique and to have purpose. It's like the number one reason why social media is taken off to the point everybody wants to show how unique and how important their life is. So I don't think there's any difference when it comes to work. I think ultimately people want to know that the work they're doing is important, that it has purpose, and that people are recognizing it and seeing it. So I look at it as, you know, an employee, it's sort of like the gasoline you pour on the fire, right? The the fire is the employee's desire to achieve and be great. And recognition, you can survive as a business without recognition, but this is what really takes it to the next level. So when you start in a business and you want to, you know, say you're, you're sitting at the top of the business and you're, you're saying, how do I develop a culture of recognition? Because I want it to be organic. I want people to want to do this. I don't want to make people do this. And I think what is important is in the beginning, you need to manufacture it. It will happen. It's already happening in certain places, but to do it consistently, you need to manufacture it. And what I mean by that, and I know that might get a little bit of flack, but what I mean by that is you really need to set up your systems for how you're going to consistently recognize your people. Because if you're doing that from the top down in a company, what that will create is more recognition uh, throughout the organization just naturally. So I'll give you an example of that. One thing I would suggest is how you have a, a quarter, uh, a yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily recognition system. So yearly is maybe an end of year event for people that hit certain numbers. A lot of companies do that. Quarterly, what we call here is our vision meeting. So that's when we would recognize, you know, uh, employee tenure, incredible achievements, kind of like the, the next highest level of recognition. Recognition. And then monthly, we have our monthly celebration and awards that our team wins every single day, or sorry, that of what they did throughout the month. And then weekly, we do it by team. And then daily, you know, encouraging one another uh, and employees and having different channels to do that. So I think the most important thing is to set up your structure of you're going to, your baseline as an organization is at least this. And then from there, it starts to take off organically and take a life of its own. And have you seen, how long have you had this in your kind of part of your culture? Kudos to our CEO is this is something he recognized very early on. So we have had, you know, it's hard to say like since I started 10 years ago, how many things are we still doing? But we've had a monthly company meeting where we recognize our employees every single month since I've been here. So that's been a huge part of it. But what's interesting is we didn't really understand the gravity of this until COVID, until individuals, you know, a lot of our uh, company who's used to working in office had to work remote and we had to find out how to maintain that cohesion and that benefit and that enthusiasm of being around one another. And the way to do that, in my opinion, uh, is not only collaboration, but also recognition. And was it, did you automate it from the beginning or was it more of an informal process for you? So it's, 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 I would call it like a art within a science. So the box was always the same, but then how you went about doing that would change. So for example, we would always have monthly awards by departments, but each department might name their award something different, right? Or they may have a unique name that ties along with their team theme or the award that they give out may be different or why they pick that person each month. The criteria may be different, but the framework Mm -hmm. stays the same of, you know, having certain awards and certain things get celebrated every single month. And, um, and did you select your, your award recipients? Um, Was it company wide or was it by your leaders? How were they selected? Great question. And, 
I wish we had a standard way of doing it. It's a little bit different all over the board. And this is where the organic part comes in, because I think it's important that if you're going to recognize somebody in a department, that that whole department feels like that person should be recognized. So in some situations, uh, a leader may be the one who's best suited to select that. In some situations, you know, like I, I think of in our operations department, it's really taken on this cool life of its own. Every Friday, if you go there, we have sort of like a toast of the week um, where everybody grabs a drink and celebrates the week. And they all get out their phones and they have this survey where, like, you can nominate people and then they all select based on the values of our company who uh, who displayed that value the best. So it's a little bit different in each part, but I do think more than anything – you should have some type of, like, people should know how you're going to select who wins so you don't have any favoritism or, you know, people still, it, the award still has credibility. Right. Uh, yeah, we've um, experimented in the past with doing a survey and then having different different functions nominate, you know, different um, people based on a certain set of criteria. And so um, talk a little bit about your recognition versus celebration. What does that look like? So, you know, when giving positive feedback, I feel like, you know, I, you, they're synonymous, but I feel like they're different. Celebration, I feel like, is more of a fleeting, in the moment, something came up and I'm going to celebrate it. When you're going to recognize someone, I feel like it's really, really important that there's a couple things that happen within that feedback. So first off, you know, a lot of people know how to recognize a person on a result that they achieved. Congratulations, you had 98% client retention or you sold $15,000. But I feel like they're most times missing two key elements. So the why, why is that important? Why is it important to sell $15,000? So that would be the ultimate impact that we have on our clients and community starting with that and then the how because when you share the how and you're recognizing this most often publicly you're training your team members as well so new team members that are seeing these uh these kudos that are out in the public they're able to realize you know hey this person got recognized for this and this is how they did that maybe i should do that as well so i think when I think recognition, I think a little bit more substance, a little bit more specifics on how they got to that point. And then celebration, I think, is more of a short term, like boosting the energy uh, immediately. Okay, nice. And would you say, um, well, going back to when I had originally asked you, for how long have you had this in place? Was there a point in time that you, when, when you're... Um, when this is was more part of you know your your um, your structure uh, that you could see a change in engagement or in performance. Yeah, I would say I'll actually use COVID because I think it was a really good example because mm -hmm. our monthly meetings weren't the same. We weren't all gathered together in one room. They were over Zoom, which is fine and it's better than nothing, but not it qu can't quite be replicated. But one thing we implemented is, is two channels in Teams, so Teams, Slack, you know, whatever you use, but two channels. One was A-player accolades because our values tie to A-players, and then one was client success stories. And what we did in the beginning is we made it mandatory, frowned upon, but mandatory that every manager had to shout one of their people out weekly, and every account manager had to share a client success story monthly. And as we started this up, it was sort of one of those things of like, well, this is forced and this isn't organic. And, and we had to talk about, you know, the only reason it wouldn't be organic is if you don't make it organic and your feedback and your shout out is not genuine uh, to the team. But what was so cool to see is, yes, that lasted for a little bit. And then you hit this point. It's almost like the diffusion of innovation graph where, like, everybody kind of jumps on board. And it takes on a life of its own. And now these are going out consistently. You know, if you pop into uh, Abstracts Teams, you can go to the channel and you can see six shout outs from today of people that are doing well. Um, and, it, and, and that 
and then they interact with it, they engage, and our employee turnover has improved uh, based on this, and our retention, our client retention has improved as well because they get what they're trying to do. Right, uh, absolutely, and and you know, I, you have a good example of coming right out of the pandemic. I think that was some. Th- you know, some companies were used to working remote. Some companies were never remote. Some had hybrids. So, you know, every time I talk to a company, especially when they went completely from in office to remote, that was the hardest, I think, for those companies. And if they didn't have the right infrastructure or technology to support them, it took them even longer. And, you know, we were impressed with some of our uh, clients' organizations or research to see that, um, you know, those companies that were able to make that shift, especially if they had some type of process or, or technology to enable them, that was not as, um, that was not as such an endeavor as some of the other ones that just, it took longer for them to kind of get, um, acclimated. And we, so are all of your employees back in the office now or are some still remote? So if, if our employees work within, the metro area they are in the office but we have a hybrid approach so we're two days remote and then three days in the office so that was sort of the middle ground of where we still felt like we you know as a team we could Mm -hmm. have the cohesion and effectiveness that we need to to deliver a great product for our clients and then from an individual standpoint that flexibility of a couple days is really what you know they actually what's funny is everybody wanted to work remote and then when we had people come back to the office, they were like, wow, I forgot how fun it was to interact with employees and, and be with them. And then we have employees that work all over the country, and obviously they're remote. We try to bring them in whenever we can, but primarily, um, you know, I would say maybe 10% of our work staff works outside of the St. Louis metro area. Okay. Um- I, we see your grow show in your background here. So can you, uh, t- you may want to kind of do a plug in for your show. Sure. Yeah. So we started a podcast and it's myself, our CEO, Scott Scully, and our, uh, my counterpart, Jeff Winters, who's the president of the organization as well. And Jeff ran, started, ran, operated his own business. And that was the business we acquired a year and a half ago. Uh, Sapper Consulting. And then Scott has run and operated multiple successful businesses. And he was the visionary behind taking abstract from $0 to $60 million. So, and then I was sort of the part of, you know, I, I bring a different perspective of I was within the business helping implement the vision and uh, the structure and, and what's you know, more in tune to what's going on on the front lines every single day. So we decided to start a, a podcast mainly for our clients and our people here internally. But we talk about the journey of going from one, two, three, four, five million dollars, and then how things change over time and allow people to try to learn from our mistakes that we've made along the way uh, to help their path be a little bit easier because it wasn't always easy uh, along the way. And uh, if we can help others, we want to do that. What's one takeaway that you can leave us today with um, that you found was a good lesson learned for you? So I think I have this when I, uh, which is interesting, when I started as a sales manager, what I realized was I, I didn't do the job before. So I really wasn't very good at the technical aspect. So for me to be good, I had to really motivate and inspire my people. And one thing that helped me is I looked at, all of my people as if there was a, it's kind of cheesy, but if there was a phone battery over their head every single day, you know, people have things that go on in their lives. Sometimes they're coming in at a 34. Sometimes they're coming in at a 99. So before I could help my employees, I have to help myself. I have to have my battery fully charged. So what do I need to do to get in the right mindset and be fully charged up each day? And then what I noticed is If I do that as a leader, almost everything else takes care of itself if I have the right people. So before I get into the X's and O's and the plays and the process of what I need to run, are all of my people charged up and excited to do the job? And over time, what I found is there's no better way to increase people's enthusiasm to do the work than recognition. Because ultimately, it hits all the points that motivates an employee 
the importance of their work, their ultimate purpose, and the mastery of the work that they're doing every single day. So what I would take away is instead of recognition being an afterthought of like something, yeah, maybe I'll get around to that, is I would put it first. And I would figure out how you consistently recognize your employees. Because if your employees are engaged, that's going to radiate through every different part of your business. And would you say that this was your tactic for also um, helping kind of or preventing quiet quitting that we're now seeing a lot with companies that are going through with the, um, you know, just um, burnout and, um, you know, there's also I had an interview with Verizon recently and they were getting their candidates were getting so many um, offers as they were coming in and in the very beginning, um, you know, probably last year more so, it was challenging. So what what is your approach to quiet quitting or preventing quiet quitting? Yeah, so quiet quitting, I feel like it has always been going on. I know it's gotten a lot of popularity recently here, but the root <laughs> of why would an employee quietly quit? Because they feel like no one would know the difference. And that brings me back to, if no one knows the difference, then someone is A, not connected to the employee, and B, not appreciating the work that they're doing on a daily basis. So if you're, you can't give good recognition without being connected with your people or it comes off as disingenuous. So I think ultimately, you're a big believer in servant leadership. It's our job as leaders to remove obstacles and create an environment for our teams to be successful. So step one, if I'm not doing that, they should quietly quit. They should go somewhere else and find a better leader to work for. But if I do that and I recognize the importance of their work and what they're doing, maybe a small percentage will, but I'm not going to focus on that because the majority of my employee base is going to be engaged. I think it's within our control. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good way to end. Is there anything else that you would like to wrap up today with? No, I think this was a great conversation. I, I know it sounds like a, oh, common sense like yeah i should recognize my employees more but you know the intentionality behind it that i've been lucky enough to kind of get brought up in this culture with has really helped our business and at the end of the day you know especially with ours in in a service industry we don't we're not selling a software we're selling a service and if you're selling a service it revolves around people and if your people aren't engaged and fired up you don't have a very good product so I think it's important and I think everybody should recognize their people. And, you know, if anybody would like to reach out or ask more questions or give me ideas on how you are engaging your employees and getting them recognized on a consistent basis, please do. I'm always looking to learn, grow and develop and would love to hear. Great. And how can they find you? So you can find me on LinkedIn, Eric Watkins, E-R-I-C-W-A-T-K-I-N-S and then President at Abstract Solutions. So A B S T R A K T, and then solutions, uh, and then you could also go to our website A B S T R A K T M G dot com for marketing group abstract marketing group. So just type in Eric Watkins abstract, connect on LinkedIn, and shoot me a message. Thank you, Eric. Thanks for joining me today, and thank you for sharing your perspectives and. Um, I, you know, this is a really interesting topic around recognition and engagement. And, uh, you know, it's an area that I think everyone could get better at. And there's always going to be, um, you know, better ways to do your recognition or ways that we can engage our people. But the more of a handle that we have on it and the more that you think about it, um, the, our research continues to show how important um, it, uh, recognition is for engagement. And it's not always about um, monetary means. We see that, you know, through every every one of our surveys, that's not what keeps your people, but it's the culture, it's the values, the, the mission of the company and how you align your, your values with the company. And part of it is about recognition. We see it through our awards program. Again, congratulations. Yeah, and we, thank you. We, I see it at my children's school. We have like a monthly flag salute and we had, we just started that back since um, the pandemic. So it's the, you know, even at a very young age, kids are so excited about being recognized. And I think it helps drive certain behaviors. They want to build more goals towards and the same thing happens as you move into the workforce. So 
Um, great, keep up the great work. And again, thank you for, for chatting with me today. And thank you everyone for listening in. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.